Good morning, everyone. My name is Ed Falk. I'm with Caldwell Banker Bain. I'm also the president for the Clark County of Association of Realtors in 2020. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce Mr. Larry Hawk. Larry is currently the state representative for District 18, Position 2, and is running for re-election. Um, Jerry has been kind of Gary and Larry has been kind enough to uh, join us this morning. And would you like to give us a little bit? background information. Uh, Larry, we do have uh, three to four questions that our members have asked us to push forward. So um, we'll, we'll try to move this right along. Well, to be brief in my background uh, information, I, I uh, moved to Vancouver from North Dakota in 1977. Um, after um, graduating from the University of North Dakota with a degree in accounting and um, uh, four years in the Navy, uh, kind of mixed in the middle there. Uh, here in Vancouver, I worked for a family um, uh, drywall firm and construction firm and kind of a, uh, a uh, uh, floor covering firm for a few years uh, and then jumped into credit unions. So I spent 35 years in credit unions. The last uh, position I had was CEO of Fiber Federal Credit Union in Longview. Um, and then I retired in January of 2017 and this position opened and I thought it was time to spend a little, a uh, little more service to my state and my country. And, and here I am state representative position two, district 18. Well, we have enjoyed uh, having several conversations with you while you've, uh, you've been in office. And uh, one of the questions that our members have is how should the legislature address the housing shortage in Washington? I think we, we have a tendency to make the housing shortage issue a little bit more complex than it is. I think it's just a supply and demand thing. Uh, and in order, to, in order to increase the supply, we need builders to have the ability to build more, obviously. I think the GMA gets in the way uh, when we talk about uh, building more things. I, I truly believe that we need to open the complete GMA book. Uh, it's 30 years old. It's time for a little bit more of a modernization. Uh, open the book, give the uh, counties a little bit more local control, uh, and try and find more dirt for these builders to build. If indeed we can increase the supply, we might give Incentives for builders might work, um, but in any case, it just boils back down to a, a supply and demand. Build more different types of housing, and in order to do that, we, we just need more room to room to uh, allow the builders to build. Yes, it's very interesting. When you look at our inventory levels, um, we're down to 0.06 months worth of inventory. Yeah. So supply and demand, we, we need land. You know, we need to control some of our permitting costs. No question. And, uh, you know, we need affordable housing on top of all that. Which leads us into our second question. And that question is, what approach will you have uh, in the upcoming session as it relates to revenue? Um. We don't have enough time to talk about revenue, uh, but I'll, t I'll touch on it briefly. Um, first of all, part of, part, you touched on permits, Ed, just a second ago, and, and local regulations. And obviously, anytime you put you know, $10,000 more of, of some sort of permit fee uh, on the backs of builders, they aren't gonna pay that. The, you know, uh, that's gonna be passed on to the homeowners, obviously. And then the price of houses are just gonna escalate past that affordable line in the sand. Uh, and uh, hate to continue on that first question, but that's, that's an obvious uh, bullet point. So how do we approach revenue? Well, uh, my friends across the aisle have coined a, a unique phrase called revenue solutions. And essentially that means taxes. Uh, and and uh, we're gonna hear a bunch about new taxes this year in the session, but uh, there again, I'm, I've been a bean counter in my, in my uh, 35 years of, of uh, credit union experience. I really think that it's past time for us to take a look at the expense side of all of the, 
financial statements in the state. I think our state grows, I use the strange analogy of the blob that ate New York. I think our, our, our state government just grows and grows and grows and we develop a new program and we add, add a bunch of people. And when that program reaches its conclusion, those people don't have a tendency to leave. And the programs just, we just build on each other. And that doesn't mean they're bad people in these agencies. It's just the way that government operates. I think if we had a, oh, just for lack of a better example, a budget czar uh, that went in and did zero based budgeting through every agency, we could really find some savings in this state. Would it be easy? Absolutely not. But I, I, you know, to balance a budget, you obviously need either revenue, which is taxes, uh, or save some money. And I think we've been ignoring this side of the equation. Well, that's an interesting view. And, and of course, we all know we've got to reach across the aisle to make some of these things happen. And yeah. that's, that's, that's a big challenge in today's society and market. Yes, sir. So another question, which kind of ties into what you're saying, Larry, is how should we balance our commitments and investments with the economic impacts that we have felt statewide? You know, COVID has, has thrown a lot of challenge at every industry, not just uh, yeah. not just housing. Well, it, um, again, a, a very wide ranging question. Um, the economic walk down Main Street in any town in the 18th district that which I have frequently. Uh, and you can feel the economic impact of all of this virus cloud that's going on. Uh, we're going to need to um, really take a look and see what, where we can save money on the state, uh, statewide world in order to um, decide what programs are solid or not and, and funnel some of that savings back into the economy, help some of these restaurants or or shoe repair places that have gone out of business or are about to. I mean, just help them on, help them with a leg up in this world. They're the drivers of this economy. Our small businesses are the backbone that we all need to supplement the, the housing market and everything else, the job market. So uh, we need to jack some more uh, time, attention and funds back into that particular world. Um, I'm gonna, uh, one of the questions that we continually get in forums is, what are your goals for the session? Well, obviously we need to balance the budget. We need to get in there and find out where we're gonna find $4.5 billion. Uh, but that aside, one of the things that, that uh, businesses and small businesses and large businesses are gonna suffer with uh, in this next year or year and a half and, or two years for that matter is their unemployment insurance is gonna get jacked up. Uh, to no fault of their own, the virus came in, they had to lay people off. So their experience rating is gonna go up. Not only will their experience rating go up, but there are two other factors within an unemployment insurance equation that uh, that will see some increases. So one of the things we need to pay attention to is how much our local businesses are paying in unemployment taxes to the state. Maybe there's a way that we can minimize those or, or try and give them again that, that proverbial leg up on, uh, on their recovery. You know, it's interesting because as realtors, we view BNO tax as being very regressive. Would you like to take a moment and talk about that? Well, and and uh, um, you saw a uh, a hit to that world within not only the B&O taxes in a professional sense, but in the real estate excise taxes that uh, uh, you have to deal with. So uh, it's just another revenue solution. I mean, we need to balance some of these uh, taxes with what's happening in the uh, in our world today. So if indeed there's ways to uh, delay or, or minimize some of these uh, points of pain that our, uh, our businesses are, are feeling, we need, to, we need to examine those at the same time we uh, you know, try and dig into our tax pocket. Well, it would seem that just about every tax method um, that is known to man seems to be on the table, including you know service tax 
Yes, so sir. what are your thoughts there? Well, it's, I, I re, back to my answer, I think in the second question or first question, I don't, I think our, our citizens are getting to the point where they're super saturated with taxes uh, and uh, uh, simply have, are struggling day to day to you know, find ways to pay those. Uh, so I, I don't believe we need more taxes or any different types of taxes. Again, I wish we could really dig into the expense side and, and find these uh, revenue solutions um, hidden in these agencies. Well, you touched on goals. So just kind of summarizing here, can you prioritize your first maybe three goals going into the next session? What, what, what you would like to focus on yourself? I want to be. I want to be part of find or figuring out this budget shortfall. Uh, my background is uh, has the experience to uh, really dig into a budget, find ways to save money, uh, find ways to transfer money, or or change some of the uh, uh, destinations of the funds that are coming in. Um, I, you guys all, I'm sure remember that that recession we had in 2008 and 2009, you probably still have scars from that. Well, I led a credit union through that. I mean, all of the houses that you didn't sell, we repossessed. <laughs> and and, uh, and that's, that's almost a draconian view, but we had some challenges with our, our uh, real estate portfolio, our home mortgage portfolio. Well, in order to not, um, uh, experience the pain that uh, that would come from this dramatic of a recession. You have to take a look at ways to save money in that in that environment. And and uh, we did at Fiber Federal Credit Union very effectively. We just took a look at every piece of our organization and said, well, we can postpone this, or we don't have to do this anymore, or we need to expand that. But that's what I think our government needs to do. So my my experience, and I'm going to try and shoehorn my way into all of these budget uh, conversations in the state and see if I can uh, lend a hand there. If nothing else, bring some common sense into some of the decisions. Uh, my guess is we leave common sense out of the equation way too often. Uh, and of course, the economic recovery, we need to think about our local businesses. I mean, if I had a, if I had a number one priority, it it would encompass helping our business in uh, community get back on their feet. Maybe take a look at some of the regulations that cost, essentially cost money, then get passed on to the consumer via the housing market. Or again, the, somebody gets their shoes repaired. If there was a requirement there or a tax went up, that's going to go up. Uh, uh, I, <clears throat> I was in a, a small town in our district yesterday and understood that the price of salads at this one particular tavern doubled. Well, it's, it's doubled based on the fact that they can only have 50% of their uh, uh, consumers in at a time. So they still need to make a living. Um, if I had a number one goal, Ed, it would be that, to help our small businesses get back on their feet. And that encompasses a wide range of opportunities. Well, that's a, that's a very good goal because as we help the the business world come back uh, to, to reality, then it helps all segments. That's all exactly markets. right. Yeah. So that that's a that's a that's a good priority, uh, Mr. Davis. As the voice of real estate for our association, do you have anything that you would like to uh, to ask uh, Larry? No, I mean I think you you covered a lot of the bases. Um, you know, certainly appreciate getting the insight regarding um, the approach for taxation and how we're gonna take a look at some of these various commitments that we have, uh, as well as uh, housing affordability and insight on the GMA. So I really appreciate uh, you sharing with us uh, what your perspective is on those issues and certainly for taking the time this morning. Well, thank you, Ryan. So um, as we kind of wrap this up, I know that, uh, that you're busy and we all have a busy schedule in front of us. We'd like to just give you a little time to uh, to speak in generalities if you would like to do so, Larry. In generality, yeah, well, just, just yeah. a little time to summarize. Well, it, 
summar summarizing politically is different summarizing generally. So I'll, uh, I'll summarize politically. Um, we have an interesting election in front of us. I mean, and, and I don't think there's any bad people running for any office. There, we, we have to get away from suggesting that somebody is good or somebody is bad. We just, sometimes we just have different ideas and different approaches. And, and I think it's important that we look, look deeply into all of the candidates this year and take a look and see who, who has been there? What kind of experience do they have? What, what can they lend to the solution for, um, you know, the steps out of, uh, out of beneath this virus cloud? So again, I, I think summarizing politically, do your homework, take a look at the voters pamphlet, call the candidates. Um, I, I post my cell phone and answer that every day. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's just a very important election. So, so if, if nothing else, I guess the message is, please vote. Uh, and however you vote uh, is certainly up to you and, and your, your beliefs, but do vote. Well, with that being said, um, I think that we've, we'd like to thank you for your time. I think you've provided some, some excellent overview as to where you stand. And uh, you know I, your priority about uh, about small business and getting them on their feet is well taken. I, I think that helps everyone. Yeah. So I, I applaud you for doing that. Well, uh, I would like to just, as Larry just did, um, remind all of our attendees today: vote. You know, November third is going to be here before we know it, yeah. and every every vote counts. This is an extremely important election. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you again for being here, Larry. We appreciate it. We appreciate your service. And, you know, on, a, on another note, your door has always been open to us. And that is also appreciated. Uh, you know, we're, we're a very vibrant organization and we care deeply about our community as well. So it's- well, and, and, and that's obvious, Ed. Uh, thank you to you and your association. And and Ryan for putting on this forum and, and uh, do call me anytime. Very good. Well, thank you. Everyone have a great day and uh, let's, uh, let's remember to vote. You guys, thank you. Everybody take care.